Over seven million illegal cars are being driven on Britain's roads every day. Not insured, no MOT or tax, no licence. We've now got a call to pick up two stolen vehicles. Each year, hundreds of thousands of vehicles are seized. Thieves don't like using their own vehicles today. And locked up at one of the country's car pounds. You have to call capital. I don't have to call anyone. I'm trying to help you here. Here we go. Fuck up. And if you've parked illegally... You can't stand on the white line. Make sure you all get back in the car. ..or even missed a payment... Hello. ..your vehicle might end up behind the maximum security gates of a car pound, too. Hi, Lee. I've just had a police job come in. This car's got drugs inside. For the first time, we've gone behind the scenes at some of Britain's busiest car pounds. You guys walk 24-7. We have our moments of rocking. ..to uncover the shocking... There's live shotgun cartridges in it. I'm quite lost for words, if I'm honest. Miserable. This is the third one they've taken off me now, I'm free done. And downright dangerous drivers committing all kinds of vehicle violations. He said that his brakes have failed. Lord, mate. Hey, you have plenty of time. Shut the door. These are the highway heroes cleaning up our streets. It's very dangerous. You've got to have your about you all the time. And once they've locked up your vehicle... You've got one car here. That's your excuse. If you don't pay the fine... Get you there. You can wave goodbye to your wheels forever. Scumbags. But if he just don't pay his tax in the first place, we wouldn't be here, would we? Britain's car pounds play a vital role in the crackdown on crime and vehicle violations on our roads. Let's see how we go. How can I help? Hiya. I to my car. In North London, one of the busiest car pounds in the country, Lantern Recovery are contracted by the police to help them seize vehicles on and around some of the liveliest roads in the country, including the M25. Around 200 staff work around the clock, locking up more than 25 vehicles a day. And if you want your car back, the first port of call is the pound reception. Hello, what can I do for you? Not like this, sent me. That's fine. Right, a high-end guy. There can only be two people in this office, so do apologise. Working here at Lanton Recovery, I've been here for quite a long time, probably in the region of about 17 years. OK, um, you, what you're saying is not really making a lot of sense, no. I, I like the challenge. Uh, I like the, the variety that you get at a front desk. Hello, what have you got there, young man? Good morning, my love. Uh, what do I have? I've got the Jack Daniels this morning. <laughs> OK, right. Good work, thank you. <laughs> Plus, I'm sort of like a people person sometimes. I say that sometimes, because sometimes I'm not. <laughs> OK. Wobbly, wobbly. That's all done. Right, thank you. Have a good day. May it get better by the minute. Ha ha. <laughs> Another veteran of the pound is driver Lee. He's worked here for over 25 years and is just starting a 12 hour shift. Hello. Hi, Lee. I've got another police job for you. Yeah. I run the South Mim site and we have got multiple sites all around the country. Right, they've given us two locations for this one. A1 Junction 5 to 4. Parallel with New Road, Welling Garden City. Yeah, I know where New Road is, I know where that is. All right, right. Up. All right. So I sort of oversee the site down here and also go out and do all the police work, recovering the vehicles for crime, for non-insured, uh, and accidents, all that sort of work. No, to be honest, you never know what you're going to go out to and what you've got to do. So sometimes you say they can be quite distressed after having an accident and in shock and they don't really know what they're doing. And other times when you're taking a car away from them and they got the hump, then it's a uh, different ball game. No one's got no money, you know, my old tax has run out. I'll try and get away with it for a month or just use the car once or twice and then bang. Last year, the DVLA dished out over 1.2 million penalties for untaxed vehicles. There he is over there, though. The missing tax amounts to £100 million in lost revenue, money that could be spent improving Britain's roadways. See, I just see if there's any passengers moving or not, but I imagine there's one or two. Is it no insurance? No, it's no tax. Oh, no tax. What's weird 
is on PNC and everything, it's an E350. Right, right. But it's clearly not. No, no, not I've checked the visible VIN under the driver's seat, one yeah. stamped into the chassis. It, it, it is the right VIN, I just, it should have been registered wrong. Right, right, okay. Without tax, the police have seized the car and the woman can no longer drive it. You're right. I'm not going to be on that, am I? Yeah, on a lorry, yeah. We're kind of a dog in the truck. Every sort of 10 vehicles that go past, you can probably guarantee three or four of them is either no insurance, no tax, no MOT, no licence. You know I mean, there's an awful lot out there. So I'll reach your car on, you stand it with your seatbelt on, and we'll get you back to the depot, we'll get the car off, and then you can get out. Yeah. yeah. This even happen, only five minutes away. Just stay in the car for the minute, yeah? All right. Yeah, some people do make genuine mistakes. There's a lot going on and don't realise that maybe the, that the direct debit hasn't come out of the bank or generally just forgot. I right, put it in neutral and the handbrake off. Right, it's going to start to it's going to start to roll. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, you'll be all right. But unfortunately, it's it's not one rule for one, one for another. The same rule applies to everyone, and the vehicle's got to be taxed and insured. Just do it over your way a little bit. Your way, that's it, lovely. You've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> right, if you just put it in park, put the handbrake on. Right, I need to take the key back. Well, if you put your seatbelt on while you're in there. I'm going to strap it on, put the bed on, and then we'll get you to the roundabout. I'll get the car off like this and we'll get you out there. All right, let's go. With the car heading to the pound, the woman and her dog will have to find another way home. In Northampton, another busy car pound. This one, run by CMG Recovery, assists a number of police forces in the Midlands. Got a bit of number five series for you, no insurance. This maximum security operation can hold up to 340 seized vehicles. So we're taking this little one here. Experienced driver Ian is responding to a police call out. Here we go again. I'm the CMG Lights Recovery Operative. I feel very privileged to be involved with helping the police removing vehicles that shouldn't be on the road. It's not just the odd day here and there. It's very busy and it's all year round. We can cut corn for any type of job. So you need to be ready for that. Wow, there's some damage on this one, isn't there? Yeah. Ian arrives on the scene to find a red Volkswagen Golf. Oh, that one. Uh. <laughs> the police have discovered the car has no tax. The owner's nowhere to be seen, but it's illegal to park an untaxed vehicle on a public road, so they've seized it. We've got another no tax vehicle, so this one's going to be taken back to the yard um, for storage um, until the customer comes to claim the car. Just as he's about to get to work, here we go. The owner shows up. What car? Mm -hmm. Really? It's about our diesel. I'm looking at the lift there. It's about our diesel. Let's go to the back. Look at the stuff up there. Yeah. And he doesn't plan on giving his car up without a fight. Car? Stop taking the key. You took the fucking car. Yeah. That car. You need to get away from the truck. Just because I'm making your job hard. Oh, what? Uh -huh. Taking the key. You took the car. Take the car. But the owner isn't happy. Here, chap. Chap. No, I ain't speaking to you, bro. Take it. You've done it. Yeah. You're going to do it without me, bro. There's no need. This is a recovery driver. You go out day in, day out, not realising what you're coming up to. It's not, you have the option. Well, we can put diesel it's in. Tax. You can pay it by the roadside. Let's go take it then. Yeah, it, I'm, yeah, not yeah, stop, I'm not stopping okay. you. Okay. I just don't want to speak to none of you. You're public servant. I don't need your service. That's lovely. Thank you. I'm just trying to help you out. Right. I'm, you can't? Yeah. How can you help me out? Not paying the tax bill at the roadside means the man will have to fork out extra cash for every day it stays at the pound. They can't take it. You ain't going to help nothing, mate. So I'm not going to help you. 
out on the road, we have people that think that if they give us abuse, they will just back down and walk away and leave their car. But unfortunately, that's not the case. The, when we are asked to take the vehicle, the vehicle will be going. Without the keys, Ian's only option is to try and lift the car onto his truck. It's a tricky manoeuvre and a dangerous one with distractions. Watch the wheels, because if you scratch them, you will pay for them. Oh, well, we took a picture of them. You can go stand over there, mate. Chat. The job itself can be dangerous. You get a lot of people that give you abuse when you're collecting the vehicle. Some people don't want you to take their car. You need to stand back, mate. You need to go back. Put the car. The guy's been a little bit awkward, so I have to keep stopping and we watch what that guy's doing. Because if he goes near that car while I'm lifting it in the air and he gets hurt, it's going to be my fault. And every time the police officer's going near him, he starts running around, so I have to keep stopping. You need to get away from the truck. I'm not going near your truck. Yeah, you get people walking up to you, trying to be, trying to intimidate you, to uh, see, get you to back down, um, or you get the the odd person trying to shouting at you, trying to put you off, so you're really doing your job wrong. Just because I'm making your job hard, because you're meant to do it properly. Let's go back. A number of years ago, I had someone spit at me. I've had drinks thrown at me. The but you have to grin and smile. <laughs> that is my front bumper on the floor. Whoa, look at that. When you get an abuse, that's when I'll kind of walk away and think, I did a good, that was a good one. That was a good one. And to top it off, even the weather starts to get frosty. See that wheel bent out, stretching my axle, and this one. Stand there and there. you can see that. Do something about it. Stand there. Come on. What are you going to do? After almost an hour, Ian finally manages to secure the car. Well done, mate. Well done. Not the first time, won't be your last. But if he had just don't paid his tax in the first place, he wouldn't be here, would we? You learn to ignore them. You learn to be the bigger man, walk away. Walk away and live another day, kind of thing. If the owner doesn't pay the bill within 14 days, Ian's next trip with the car will be to the scrapyard. Police use automatic number plate recognition cameras to check whether vehicles are insured, taxed, and MOT'd. I've got no insurance for you in Daventry, it's Ford Fiesta. Intercepting cars in this way helps the police crack down on more serious crimes too. Usually you stop a vehicle for one thing, it could be something small, and it can lead to a whole host of other things. It's a way of almost targeting criminals, and it's quite an easy way for the police to catch somebody and uh, it can be a really effective way of helping to prevent and even detect crime. So I, for one, I really enjoy a bit of traffic day-to-day uh, -day, as it, re it really helps us do our job. And it was an ANPR camera that snared Lee's first catch of the day, an untaxed Mercedes. Lee's towed the woman and her dog to a bus stop nearby. Sit here. Yeah, get out now. Don't slip on here, yeah? Hold on. Let me get my dog. I've got to yeah. get my stuff as yeah. well. Quite hard for life, Lee. Oh, you always do, don't you? New car, Have you? What, are you driven down today? Yeah. Have you? So lucky enough. Yeah. This is the third one they've taken off me now in three is months. It? For what? What, no tax oh. or? No, no, no. The first one. I don't really know what it's a bit long winded or. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, so we're at junction four here, we're at junction one. Of the A1. Yeah, on the roundabout. You can see us from the roundabout. Yeah. Alright, no worries. 
All right, see ya. To save her car from the scrap heap, she will need to pay the tax and storage costs. Only then can it be released back to her. For some people, not paying their tax might be accidental, but others take an illegal and risky gamble. People take their vehicle out either without knowing that they haven't taxed it or, or being fully aware that they haven't taxed it and trying to go to a cheeky corner shop somewhere. In the weather, certainly makes a difference. If it's raining or you know bad weather, they thought, oh, well, rather than walk around the corner, I'll jump in the car, just take a chance. It's only around the corner, but nine times out of 10, that's exactly when you're going to get caught, and it's just around the corner from your house. But it's quite a meaty car, isn't it? Ten plate, so it should be back. It's very cheap to get your car taxed anyway. Um, I've had people come in and get their car taxed for £30, but yet they've been charged 100 quid just to get their vehicle pulled out. So it's, it's uh, a risk that's not worth the reward, to be honest. One, two, three, four, five makes 200. Forgetting to pay your tax might be an honest mistake, but it's still an expensive one. Yeah, that was silly. Stay at the pound doesn't come cheap. She could have come back and paid the security charge, £160, and the £100 recovery fee, and took it. Uh, but she chose to go home, so we dropped off in Hatfield. So all she's got to do now is get tax for it, bring the documents in, come in to us. Within 24 hours, that's £100, or over 24 hours is £200. So as soon as she comes in, the cheaper it will be. And if she doesn't return within 14 days, it could be fatal for her Mercedes. The pounds don't just see people who've broken the law, but victims of crime too. A vehicle is stolen in the UK every nine minutes. If they're found, they often end up at the pound, where they rack up daily storage fees until they can be reunited with their owners. One such unlucky owner has come to collect his motorbike. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, so this is the white one, isn't it? The one that uh, does a kickstart, doesn't it? Okay. Basically, I come to my girl's house in Hatfield, and then all of a sudden I come outside after a couple of hours after seeing the back last, see it's not there. So do you have your documents, sir? Yeah, I've got pictures of it. And then we'll sort out some money, yeah? I was stressed, because me, I love my back, you know, and I've always loved backs as a kid, and that's my favourite back I've ever had. I didn't chain it to something. So it was just there, immobile, but movable? Not really movable. They must have picked it up and put it in a van. There was probably more than one of them as well. He may be one of the 40,000 who fall victim to motorcycle theft each year, but he was smart enough to be prepared. <laughs> Lucky they didn't know I had a track here inside and they didn't try looking for one. Because as soon as it suits on the back, I got the notification that it's... You got it back real quick. Yeah. In, in that case, you just got so lucky. Right, so I've got those printouts. They're fine. Uh, now we just need to sort out some money. So you've got uh, £150. Is that debit card or cash? Debit card. Debit card, OK. It's the white kickstart bike, um, Husqvarna. It's just on the, well, it was near this second bench. There you go. There, all right. No problem. Good luck. With storage fees paid and documents verified, the bike is back with its rightful owner. I got charged 150 pounds. I mean, you know what, it's better. The bike cost me like four and a half grand, so I'd rather pay 150 than lose the whole thing. But it's not quite the happy ending he hoped for. From what I'm seeing right now, it looks all right. And I think it would be all right because, oh, wait. Yeah, we've got a problem here. There's no clutch. It looks like the bike was damaged during the theft. Oh, no way. This is broken. That little metal rod, that's not supposed to be there. I'm not sure. I'm not a mechanic, innit? It's been a costly experience. Including travel costs and to try and get the bike up to the garage is going to cost at least... at least £100. That's the... <laughs> it's a bit of a bummer, really. 
but with a temporary fix found, at least he'll be able to get his bike home today. Just testing it out, isn't it? I feel like, I feel like the steering's a little bit off, you know? Because when I've got the handlebar straight, the wheels are slightly going a bit to the right. Which wasn't happening before, it's a bit weird. It shouldn't be like that. But other than that, the clutch is fine now. I mean, it's rideable. I have to take it slowly. I need to get to Watford. I've got a garage there. I'll take it to them, see what they say. Hopefully it won't cost me more than like 20 quid. I hope. A few miles south, and a busy day for Lee continues as he heads to another police job. This one's a 165A, which is no insurance. There's a lot of vehicles out there. You say you probably find every sort of 10 cars that go past you, probably four or five of them are no insurance. There's an awful lot out there that ain't more than probably what you really think or what you know. Every year, uninsured drivers injure 23,000 people and that results in increases to everyone else's insurance premiums. There it is. It looks like it's stuck in the mud. We're going to have a look. There's a police car there, so we'll have a little chat to them and see what's what. What is this, no insurance? What, what have we got this for? Season under no insurance. But it's obviously stuck there, is it? Yeah. Tried to get it out, but unfortunately can't get it out. So we winch it out and take it away. No problem. All right. Not your normal one, but... Before Lee can load the car onto his truck, the driver wants to empty the boot. They've obviously been delivering the parcel to this house, gone in and tried to turn around and come out, and obviously got stuck on the grass. Somewhere along the line, maybe the police have been called or they've come past, uh, and in, in two eyes, he's got no insurance. So he's now unloading all the parcels out of the car, and we'll take the car. I don't think he's very happy. <laughs> Everything out. Everything out. Yeah. Huge increases in online shopping has seen a massive rise in freelance delivery drivers on Britain's roads. Just stand over that way just a little bit, just make sure you're out the way. And many of them aren't driving the more traditional vans or lorries. There's profit to be made by reducing your outgoings. But insurance isn't something you can do without. It's a massive effect. The uninsured drivers out there obviously cost everyone money. When they have an accident, you know what I mean? If they hit you and they're not insured, that means you've got a claim off your insurance, which at the end of the year, your insurance premium will go up. And if you multiply that by everyone that's out there that gets hit, it's an awful lot of money. So these people out there with no insurance cost everyone, on, everyone out there an awful lot of money every year. There'll be a few unhappy customers there, soaking wet parcels. Obviously, them parcels, that are all time deliveries, and that cause a problem for the person delivering them. And obviously, uh, just probably a whole load of hassle, really, you don't need. Whether intentional or just careless, a stay at the car pound will prove a costly experience for this delivery driver. Now, the inconvenience he's got is obviously uh, getting all his paperwork together, going to a police station, getting it all stamped, and then coming into us, uh, paying the charges, which is £150, plus any storage, if it's there over 24 hours. Plus, he'll have a fine from the police, so obviously a 200 pound fine for no insurance, and he gets six points on his license. So all in all, he's not had a very good day. That is my front bumper on the floor. After being harassed by the owner of an untaxed car, Ian eventually gets it back to the car pound in Northampton. Oh, he really kicked off. Yeah. He, he weren't happy at all, and it was uh, making it very difficult for me. No tax, sir. Yeah, no tax, and he was. He said he'd run out of diesel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he just shouting, running around, running around the truck. I had, I had to stop so many times. Yeah. Because at one point, it was actually standing right beside the truck. You get them days that test you. Well, that, <laughs> that was definitely a tester. <laughs> Win. Attitude, <laughs> nothing got damaged, all good. Yeah. All happy days. He wouldn't give us the keys, 
it will sit, it will sit there um, until he either comes in to tax it or, uh, well, if he doesn't come to collect it, salvage. He's got 14 days, so the quicker he gets here, the better it will be for him. So what we do, we're going to put this away. Go do some paperwork. Give the yard man to make me a coffee. <laughs> yeah, can you please? Meanwhile, at Lantern in London, there's the usual steady flow of vehicle owners arriving at reception. Hi. What can I do for you? I've come to collect some personal items from a car. So what did you want to collect? Uh, it's a Kia Sportage. My customer just left his car on the M25, literally not very far from here. Uh, it's a black Land Rover Range Rover. You have to call Capital. I don't have to call anyone. I'm trying to help you here. You do need to have a relatively thick skin but a lot of the time, it's more a case that they're upset. Yeah, I've got the letter from the owner. You get people that are like, I want my vehicle back. Give me my car. It's my vehicle. You can't stop me getting my car. Look, I understand what you're telling me. The but police say to so the guy is in need to be paid. It's simply that they know about the payment. Hello, Lantern Recovery Sampins. Yeah, some of them are, are, are fairly strong. Some of them are fairly... Um, Bolshy. It's just a joke. Thank you. But it's not my place to judge. All I'm there to do is to make sure the documents are right, to make sure that the people do the right thing, they, they pay what they owe, and they get the vehicle out. You know, that's it. How many times for me today, Amber? 120. Quite a few. Just a couple. No, it's me, take care. Cheers, bye. No. Hi, I'm going to get to the car. Mr. Rich. There he is, over there. Earlier, Lee picked up a woman and her dog after police pulled her over for not having vehicle tax. I literally was having another five minutes away. Just stay in the car for a minute, yeah? She revealed this wasn't her first dealings with the pound. Oh, I've got half an eye for Lee. Oh, have you? This is the third one they've taken off me now in three is months. It? It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And now she's back for her car. I've got the documents that you just sent them through, didn't you? This is what do you need? Just a passport? Uh, yeah, got it insured and everything for the day, have you? Yeah. It's the last thing you need to do is for the police to put it back in because you haven't got it insured. Don't. <laughs> that would be my love as well. That'll be another 150 quid as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't get it. Okay, just check that's the right amount then. Perfect. There's your invoice. Um, if you wait out the front, I'll get the boys to bring it up front to you. No, let's take care. Guys, go get a vehicle pulled out of the police pound, please. It's a Mercedes E350. Getting it back, so that's good. No dogs today, so that's even better. <laughs> Between the storage costs, paying her tax in full, and possibly a higher insurance premium, it's been an expensive journey home. I think it was two hundred and sixty pounds, and then obviously tax as well. It does take the mickey a bit, especially when it's an honest mistake and it's not really your fault. But it is what it is, myself, too. I've got a car, so thank you, I go. At CMG's Pound in Northampton, someone else has come to get their car back. The driver of the untaxed Golf has had to pay his tax bill, plus another £100 to get his vehicle released. Oh, can you hear that kind of fire and fire, dude? This is Joe. Golf, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, can we have a look over it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was literally on the way back from the diesel at the petrol to stick it off the... or take it off the road. But you can't move an automatic. Without a thing, I can't tow it. 
And a lot of coppers don't know that because they're stupid. But that's a copper's prerogative, isn't it, being stupid? Scumbags. Way too much. Come here. Where this in there? When I tell you to. Good old easy start. Good old easy start! Good. <laughs> That's one happy customer. Across the other side of the yard, Will, who's worked here for nearly three years, has picked up a vehicle found abandoned. Definitely going to scrap. No one's coming back to pick this up. I wouldn't even pick it up. It's filthy and it's, it's a banger. Definitely being out, wagging it around the field. But what's inside the car? is even more shocking. Oh, the wall live. Um, that's not actually good. Live shotgun cartridges. Might need to get firearms to come down to take these, to be fair. Hello. Um, this blue Fiesta, there's live shotgun cartridges in it. Live shotgun cartridges. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. And I've just um, lifted the plate. It's kind of painful. Right. No, nah, there's no gun in there. Yeah, all oh, right, mate, no worries. All right, there you go. This don't happen often. You don't tend to find shotgun cartridges in a car. Come on, It looks like the car might have been used for coursing, a common problem in rural parts of the UK where poachers hang out of the window of a moving car and shoot at animals in fields. Never had that before. First time for everything, I suppose. When they can't catch them in the act, the police have found that prosecuting poachers for motoring offences can be an effective way to stop their crimes. So Will's discovery might end up being a valuable one for the authorities. Saying that today is just got to take a bit of caution. Um, police are coming down to get the shotgun catchers and raising a whole new instance, so they're going to sort of investigate to see actually what was going on. Friday. Hello, Friday. It's like a mini holiday, isn't it? Yeah, come Friday. It's like, oh, yeah, I've got a little mini holiday. Yeah, really? Seriously? That's how you look at it? I know you guys don't have policy because you, you, you guys rock 24-7. We have our moments of rocking. With the cars that come into the pound, 25% to, to a third would be not reclaimed. Enjoy your weekend. Mate. I will, mate. I'll be thinking with you. No, you won't. <laughs> They're either involved in, in something nefarious, there's a used in crime, uh, or they're proceeds of crime. The police will hold on to those vehicles. They then go on to a life in the scrapyard in the sky. And we've had beautiful Jaguars. We've had a couple of other vehicles that are just so stunning. And you just think, no! <laughs> Back on the road, Lee is on yet another police call out. We're going out to a uh, BMW 420 uh, that's been stolen in Hatfield. It's been dumped in a pub car park. In the UK, only two in every five stolen motors are ever returned. There is quite a lot of stolen cars out there. We probably, uh, on average, we could probably do maybe a dozen a week, something like that. All right, it should be right here. This is the pub here. How you doing? Hello, mate. You all right? Not bad. This little gem here, is it? We've got keys or anything for Hello. it or not? Is it for full Soco? Soco, or scene of crime officer, will carry out a full forensic inspection of the vehicle once it is back at the pound. It means Lee cannot touch the inside of the car. Obviously, Lee, look at this side. It's obviously been through the wars. Yeah. You know, they might be too happy with that when he comes back. 
Keyless car thefts have risen by more than 200% in the London area, making some luxury models practically uninsurable. It's a growing problem. Newer vehicles that have got the keyless technology, there are ways and means where criminals can go and they use devices that will basically forge the, the, the key to open the vehicle and then they'll just be able to drive off with them. Um, that's why police actually recommend that you get the um, tins and the pouches that you can put your keys in um, so that the signals don't emit. Right, that's it. Let's go. Right, we're going. Some car pounds have dedicated facilities where cars can be stored and inspected by forensic teams. When we bring the vehicles in for the police, they have to go into a secure pound. So it's all locked on camera, it's all sealed up. The police will contact the owner to tell them they've recovered their vehicle. But it's not all good news. It'll be a shock for them when they come in and see this one, no doubt. They wouldn't want the car back, it'll go for their insurance, which means their, their premium's going to go up. Bad luck all round, I've had the car taken, had it smashed up, and now they're going to suffer when they go to reinsure a car. So, yes, it's not good. Well, there you go, police job for you. Back on the road again, car pound driver Lee has had another non-stop day. A 06 plate BMW 3 Series. From the M25, 22 to 21. And we've got this one for no tax. We do get quite a few near misses on the motorway. The motorways are the most dangerous place we probably work. It's three lanes of, of, of fast flowing traffic. Obviously, you've got lorries normally in the slow lane, which are doing sort of 50, 60 mile an hour, and they're right on the white line. Of course, running going to be the foot the other side of it. So we've got to be very careful. There's the red lights. The officer spotted the car driving erratically. So we were travelling down the M25, seen the vehicle ahead of us. Um, it's been right behind the vehicle in front of it. It's then done an undertake on that vehicle. It's then proceeded to then go into lane one, um, undertake several more vehicles. We've caught up with it. Reported in roadside for the man who was driving, driving without due care and attention. Further checks on the vehicle review, revealed that it was untaxed in September this year. Um, and none of the DVLA uh, devolved rules, we're allowed to seize that vehicle. That means there are five of them? Yeah, five. Oh, I'm right, blimey. All right, they'll have, to, uh, they'll have to stay in the car. As well as the car, Lee now has five passengers to look after, too. We do. You all need to get back in it, because you've got to stay in the car on the lorry. All stay in the cars, all of you. Come over here. You can't stand on the white line. Make sure you all get back in the car. So we'll get it now. We'll get you on the lorry, and then we'll get you back to the depot, yeah? You've got to stay in the car, yeah? Have you got your documents on you? Documents, driving licence, insurance? Yeah, I have it. MOT for the car? For this I take my car, for the tax. Yes, yeah, but have you got MOT on you or not? What documents have you got on you for the car? I have all the documents. You've got everything, OK. He might have his documents, but he doesn't have much patience. Come on! No time. No time? Yes. Yeah, you have plenty of time. Shut the door. And it turns out there's a reason for the rush. One of his passengers, he's running late for his flight. So, yeah, unfortunately, now, because of that, it's going to be even later. Good afternoon, Lanterns. Right, OK, no front wheels. OK, yeah, leave it with us. I'll get a driver on his way. After dropping the hapless holidaymakers at the pound, Lee's last call of the day is to a remote country lane. Oh, there it is down there. Lovely. That's what we want. It's one of around a million fly tipping incidents reported in England every year. And lifting and disposing of these nuisance vehicles is yet another job for the Pounds recovery team. This is a lovely job, isn't it? What's this one? Just been dumped? Has it all just come off or something? Yeah, is it? it or it's, looks uh... like uh, fly tippers. It looks yeah. like it's been in the back of a low loader. Then yeah. It's just protruded by the cable. Drive off. Uh, Drive off. Obviously, it's left the. Uh... <laughs> left it there. Left the beautiful beast behind. Yes. No wheels, full of rubbish. You know what I mean? 
In the last three years, the pounds have seen an increase in large vehicles like this being dumped at roadsides. When you get a few caravans, to be fair, they do the same again. They'll get a caravan, fill up the rubbish, tow it down the road, down the lane like this, unhook it and drive off. I can't find anything on it that will actually... Relate to anything? No. They've right. stripped the passenger side door of all the uh, yeah. plates. Everything will be on there, yeah. It's like... Yeah. Trick yeah, that's what they do, don't it? That's what they do. Yeah. But I've obviously cut this door off, which normally has all the platings in there, to say, what well, obviously, vehicle, chassis number, that sort of stuff. They've obviously took that off, so you can't find out which car, what it is. Um, and then just filled up the rubbish and dumped it. With night falling fast, the four-ton motorhome dumped on a narrow country lane is a hazard. Can't leave it here for too long. Lee's colleague Michael arrives to assist. I'm quite lost for words, if I'm honest. Oh, boss. I'm from Yeah. There's, there's almost a camper family. <laughs> I've been to some police jobs over the years, but I think this one is one of the better ones. I've... You ain't got to worry about no damage, have you? No, I, I love the fact, though, that somebody's padlocked it to a tree. Go on, Michael. Safety, so in all the years you've been doing this job, I don't think you've had anything quite like oh. this, have you? Right, nice and easy, Mark. You're not under your normal driving. With the motorhome on its way back to the pound, Lee's day is done. But in 12 hours' time, he'll be back at the wheel doing it all again. Let's go and see what it's all about. Next time. I'd say you can't really be driving it anywhere. A car without an MOT is taken off the road for good. So what we'll happens if you know how coming to pick it up, the car? Uh, it'll get crushed. Hello. Hello. And an impatient punter at the pound has plate problems. Hello. Hello. I'll be back here in a few minutes. <laughs>